So now let's talk about how we can use floating on the left and on the right. So we could have a layout where our images are going back and forth. That personally I think is better balanced than if all the images are just on one side or the other. All right, so we're going to be doing floats again, but we're also going to be using something called a class. So over here in Dreamweaver, working on our setup page, the start page here. Let me first introduce the idea of what a class is. A class is kind of like if you're in Excel or Office and you have like those preset headings that just sort of hang out there, they exist until you use them. That's kind of like a class. So I typically put classes in my CSS after everything else. So I'm all the way at the bottom before my closing style tag. And the syntax for a class is it starts with a period. And you can call a class whatever you want. A class we're going to use to set up our CSS rules. One will be to have images float to the left, and another will be to have images float to the right. So it makes sense to call them something descriptive like that, such as float left, put an open curly bracket and a closing one. And I'm going to do another one down here. So again, it starts with a period, and I'll put it float right, open bracket, and closing bracket. And so now in the brackets, I'm going to put that attribute float left, and in this one, I will put float right. Okay, so I'll just put a space here so it's easier to see. I can call it whatever, but I did call it something that would make it easy for me to identify and remember what this class is doing. I called it float left, and what it is doing is it would float something left, and the same thing here, except for it's called right. And whenever I have a floats, I generally need to have a clear. So I'm going to have one, another one, I'm going to call it clearing. Oh. Okay, open bracket, and I'm going to put in the attribute clear both. So that way this can work if for both the float left and float right. Now these guys just hang out here until I use them. Let me do just like another really simple one, and I'd still like you to follow along with this. I'm going to call this green text and I'm going to make an attribute here that is color and let's pick something as green as we can get green okay Put my semicolon all right and I'm gonna do another one I'm gonna call highlight and I'm gonna give that a background color of yellow okay so again these things, nothing's changed over here. They just hang out. I'm going to take some words. Um, uh, composed, performed, music. All right, let's take this word music. I'm going to highlight it. And in my properties inspector, I have a field that's called class. And I see, if I click on it, all of the classes I wrote. So I'm going to choose highlight. And now just this word has that class applied to it. And it has a background of yellow. So let's take another word, highlight it, and switch the class to uh, green text. And now just this word is green. Okay? So you could continue on. I could pick something from my heading, and I could give it one of those classes. For example, it doesn't matter what it is. Okay, so a class just hangs out here. It's basically you're writing a style, and then you can apply it to a specific thing. So when you show this to me, I do want to see some examples of a class. If it's just could be as simple as this, a background color, some a text color, um, extra padding, and uh, a margin or something like that, and then you apply it to just a sentence or a word or something. All right, so back to our floats. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on our image, and then we're going to float this one to the left, and then we're going to float this one to the right. We're going to go back and forth. So I click on the image. Go to class, choose float left. Click on this one, class, float right. This one, class, float left, and so on and so forth. Let's just go through to the rest. Okay, they've all been 
given floats to the left and to the right. And as we can see, once things became floated, there's a lot of jumbling that's going on. So what we need to do is we need to clear in between each one of these. And the thing, if you remember correctly, that separates all of them is our H3 here. So I'm going to apply that class that clears to all of my headings. So I'm going to highlight those guys and then apply the class clearing to stop that whole floating thing from happening. Okay, see how it brings it down? So it's like, it's, I'm not going to participate in this whole floating thing. So let's go through to all of those and clear them out. Okay, so that certainly helps, and but now we have to control things simply with padding and margins and things like that. All right, so going up here into our code, one thing we could do is I'm going to target the paragraph here. I'm going to give it some padding so that way it's not always going right up against our image. And in my floats themselves, I could add some padding. So I'll go into my float left, right? This has a float left. So it'd be nice if that had padding on the right. I'm going to give it 20 pixel, px. So that way, every image that's floated to the left, it'll have padding on the right. And then I'll do the same thing for my float right, except for this should be padding on the left. So that these guys will now have space over on that side. I'm going to give them a little bit of uh, padding also onto the bottom to try to push this down. I'm going to give it, let's try like 50 px, and I will do that for both of them. Okay, and that's helping to push down these headings so that there's more space and they are closer associated with the body of text below it. So now back up to our main and the paragraph. Some things that I could do for this. I could actually give this paragraph a width if I wanted. We could do um, alignment, we can do padding, um, all kinds of things. Let's try all of them. So in my main paragraph, let's see what happens if I give that a width. Let's try it at 600. Okay, so 600 is pretty good. Uh, let's see what it looks like if we did text align oops justify okay and then maybe we add a little bit of padding on the sides although we could also add that padding to our main itself let's see we do have some padding here already maybe we'll add increase that padding a little bit more 25 25 so that there's a little bit of more space between the edges of our text or the images. If we wanted to get these headings into the middle, we're going to be looking for our main H3. And here we could do a text align center. And now those guys are in the middle. Okay, so at this point, you would just be continuing to do a little tweaking with any padding or margins or things like that. Um, but let's just save it and do a quick preview in the browser. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. Um, does look like there's still a little bit, there's a little bit more padding over on this side than this side. So it's just something to go in and tweak. Um, but as I said, it really just kind of comes down to additional spacing.